This DVD demonstrates the uh, sinus augmentation uh, through the osteotomy side technique. Uh, the patient is a healthy Caucasian in her late 50s. She is missing tooth number 14, the upper left first molar. Uh, she's healthy, uh, does not take any medications and uh, no allergies. Uh, no contraindication for the implant placement. Looking now at uh, the uh, second image, uh, this is the uh, 3D image of uh, her CT scan, but looking from the occlusal uh, surface of the uh, maxillary arch. And we can see here we have enough uh, mesodistal distance and buccolingual uh, for the implant uh, to uh, replace missing molar. So this is the uh, panoramic image of the CT scan, and uh, we can see that we have uh, insufficiency in the alveolar bony height under the maxillary sinus uh, in the area of number 14. This is a cross-sectional image, and we can see that we have only 8.5 millimeters or so under the sinus floor. The uh, planned implant is 5.3 uh, by 10. We have uh, enough width to uh, place 5.3 implant. However, to place 10 millimeter implant, we are required to uh, lift the sinus floor by around 2 millimeters because, again, we have only 8.5 millimeter of bone available under the sinus floor. Uh, another uh, small problem we have beside the millimeter and a half to 2 millimeters uh, shortage of uh, alveolar bony height under the sinus floor, the bone density for this patient is very low. Uh, looking at the uh, at this image, we can see the uh, mean average in the square that I outlined here in this cross sectional slice is uh, around 130 uh, Hounsfield units. So this is uh, falls into uh, uh, density type 4. Uh, which is very weak. So what we will be doing for this patient is placing implant, uh, which will be 5.3 uh, millimeter in diameter and 10 millimeter in height. However, before doing so, we would be uh, forming the osteotomy using a combination of drills and osteotomes to condense the bone laterally so the implant will engage a better quality bone when we insert it and also we will be doing uh, sinus lifting through the osteotomy site. So uh, two uh, small techniques that um, not used on daily basis but uh, require to place successfully implant in this particular location for this patient. So now the uh, procedure starts. The uh, patient uh, did receive local uh, anesthesia. There was no IV or even oral sedation uh, used. And uh, we can see here in the mirror the uh, available uh, width of the arch. So uh, we're going to be doing a flapless technique. So after the local anesthesia, I took a disposable uh, tissue punch, 4 millimeter in diameter you should use uh, a tissue punch that is narrower than the planned implant. So the implant again would be 5.3 by 10 millimeter and the uh, tissue punch that I selected is 4.0 millimeter in diameter. So after we go all the way to bone with the tissue punch, now with the periosteal elevator, we go around the uh, periphery of this uh, circular cut and we remove this uh, tissue. Uh, plug, if you will, using a Malt 9 uh, elevator. So here we go, very clean cut, that was removed. And no matter how uh, poor the density is, you need always to start with a 2.0 drill. So 2,000 round per minute with uh, uh, copious irrigation. Uh, we put the uh, 10 millimeter uh, stopper on the drill uh, because we're going to go only around 8 in the bone, and we have roughly 2 millimeter thickness of soft tissue. So we went all the way to the sinus floor until I filled the sinus floor, but I did not penetrate the sinus floor with the uh, rotary uh, instrument. We took x-ray, as you did see, with the 2.0 parallel pin. And now after the 2.0, we're going to switch to 
the osteotome uh, kit. You should use the one that belong to the company you are using uh, the implants of. So we're going to be using only uh, two osteotomes out of those six different osteotomes diameters kit. The first one uh, was to enlarge the osteotomy from 2.0 to 2.8. And this one, the second one, that will enlarge the osteotomy. I guess that was the first one, again, to enlarge the osteotomy to 2.8. And then the second one to uh, 3.9. And now we're done with the osteotomy, so roughly up to four millimeter. Now we use the sinus osteotome. So we need to go 10 in bone. Uh, we have two millimeters uh, roughly of soft tissue. We put the stopper at 12 and we go with the mallet uh, until the stopper reaches the level of the soft tissue. So here we go all the way. So now the uh, osteotome, the sinus osteotome, the concaved one, is roughly two millimeters into the sinus cavity. Uh, notice please how we remove the sinus osteotome from the osteotomy. You should try not to enlarge obviously the osteotomy with the stool, so you do not want to uh, exert any lateral uh, movements. Now this is a collagen or a plug and uh, we will take uh, around 5 millimeter of this product here. Cut small piece. We're going to be placing this all the way in the osteotomy up to the sinus floor. We do not want to uh, have uh, in case we have small uh, perforation uh, which I doubt however uh, as a preventive measure by putting this small collagen plug we will have like a cushion uh, between the implant and the little bit of bone graft that we're going to be placing after the uh, collagen plug as you can see here allograft material uh, so that will prevent uh, any of this material or implant from getting inside the sinus this is a, a Dio implant system 5.3 by 10 that we will be placing after the introduction of the collagen and the bone graft material into the osteotomy. This is the packaging of the implant. And if we get good initial stability, we will be able to place uh, the healing abutment. This is a three millimeter high uh, wide body healing abutment. Otherwise, we can put the cover screw. So here we go. We start after the 2.0 drill and a couple of implant osteotomes and then one uh, sinus osteotome. Now we introduce the collagen. We use for that two tools, smooth tip pliers and the membrane placement instrument. We can see here making sure the collagen plug did not stick to the walls of the osteotomy and it's pushed uh, gently all the way up. And now we introduce a little bit of uh, bone graft material. So between the collagen and a little bit of bone, as you can see, the osteotomy is completely filled. That's okay. Now as we are uh, pushing the, uh, inserting the implant, uh, that's going to be squeezed and pushed up and the sinus would be a little bit lifted. So we can use here the 
sinus osteotome just to gently uh, pack the bone graft and the membrane further into the osteotomy. Now we engage the implant with the implant driver. Again, 5.3 by 10. Shut down the irrigation. We lower the speed to 35 newton centimeter. The torque is 35 in here. Set in the machine and we place the implant all the way until we have a good two millimeter of soft tissue coverage above the implant's platform. We can see here with the perio probe that we have uh, just under three millimeter of soft tissue coverage or thickness, if you will, above the implant's platform. For the longevity of the implant, you need to have a good uh, soft tissue seal above it. So anywhere between two to three millimeters. Uh, I was happy with the initial stability it was very close to a 35 uh, still the implant is not candidate for immediate load however it is candidate for uh, one stage placement so this is a three millimeter uh, height cuff healing abutment wide body uh, placed on the implant and the procedure is done at this time the we give the patient post-op instructions uh, medications and uh, post-op appointment uh, x-ray for the record and uh, as you can see here the procedure uh, really lasted no more than 30 minutes the uh, video was edited down to around 10 minutes but the proce procedure took around uh, 30 minutes thank you for watching